welcome to the NES Show, episode number 272. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Twy. G'day. Hello, Twy. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. Not as sore as I was expecting to be after a night of laser tag. Ooh, looks like we got a story today. No, uh, not much of one. It was a bit rusty. Only came third. Still, a, a fun story to be heard soon enough. So anyway, uh, let's get into the news. So we start off with uh, the My Little Pony mini adventure game or the tabletop storytelling game. So it seems that the people at the River Horse place or website or company just released a free mini adventure for players to add more content to their games. So this is kind of cool. Uh, if you guys at home who don't have the core rule book or the core adventure because A, you don't have money to buy or B, it's hard to get, um, this would be something for you to try and look out because it's free, it's a downloadable PDF and you can just take a look, see and read what it says. I am... Definitely, once I figure out how to do it, I'm downloading this because I can't afford the books yet and I really want them. Hmm. And this will be a good way to start getting some knowledge of how the game plays. I'm just trying to look, see at the story adventure and what it's trying to tell. Um, the adventure is called The Gift Horse. We need adventure for the Tales of Equestria story that the game be, be written so that Game Master can use it as a scene within the main adventure he or she running is running uh, yeah yeah as predicted okay yeah yeah this is a short story to a uh, slight in between it's like a regular episode nice that's good i i just i just downloaded it so so i can i can use I, i'm gonna look for it after we finish recording yay so you, you play a lot of D, right twy Oh, uh, yeah. I'm starting a new group uh, this week, plus I'm in another group already, and I recently stopped a DMing for a group of, uh, at the start of the month, or last month. So, when you tell your stories or when you do your games, do you have, like, intermission in between? Not so much. When you play uh, a campaign, you generally just follow the campaign. Mm-hmm. Like, campaigns were written to have, like, you know, lots of different places that you go to and lots of little side quests that you can do, but there isn't anything I would consider to be, like, an intermission. Uh, so, basically, this... Well, um, I, I think the gift horse here is the side quest, then. Yeah, I, I think this would be more more akin to what would otherwise be considered a, a, a one-off adventure or a mini-dungeon for Dungeons & Dragons. Because mm-hmm. you get campaigns which are long, you know, whole chapters of content, and then you have one-off adventures, which can be anywhere from a few locations that you go to to just a single dungeon that you go to complete and return to town. Mm, there, there seems to be RPG in a nutshell. And talking about adventures, up next is awesome concept art for the My Little Pony movie. So, if you're interested in the movie or art book in general, it seems that the movie is going to be coming out with an art book pretty soon. So as per usual, art books involve a character profile, how they look and whatnot, and a lot of inside stuff or behind the scenes stuff with the, what you call this, movie. And it seems that it's going to be available in Stores around, I think, uh, August 29th, 2017. So, yay. That's good. I was really enjoying some of this concept art. I always enjoy seeing uh, concept art for locations like towns and uh, landscapes, especially places that aren't uh, designed to be generic and dull. Some of these forest ones I really like the look of. Uh, it's got character art stuff as well, which is less interesting because the character art designs are sort of... We've seen them for many, many years. They haven't changed. Well, if you take a look, see, the way that the ponies are drawn here 
are in the movie style. So that's something new. That's something interesting. Instead of the standard uh, animation or the standard cartoon ponies that we've seen, this one's a bit different. Oh, uh, yeah, it's different in that way, but uh, the overall the, the design of them hasn't changed a uh, too much. All right, all right. That's still, like, it's enjoyable to see, like, oh, them being here, how they look here and uh, here in the movies and in the cartoons. And also, yeah, you mentioned about the forest. Th- those are purely concept art. Like, this is how we envision this world we look like. Ooh. Some of these are really nice. I, I like this this one of like an early version of Cantalot. Which one? The wireframe or the underneath the the image with them in the forest full of giant bugs. Ah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh, that scene, the three quarter scene, that uh, digital. I think almost three D kind of event rendering. Like oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that seeing that sort of thing with towns and cities, especially ones that aren't bore that don't look boring. Like Cantalock looks really nice and interesting. Yeah, and this is going to be really confusing for people who, like, like us, for example, like we've seen the castle a lot of times. We've seen that it's over the hill or whatever it is, and there's always that thing you know that one part of the castle that doesn't really make sense so what is that thing <laughs> now we have it in the movie but still what is that thing uh which part like that like the orb that's on that little bit by itself no it's just that platform there like why does that platform even exist oh the big round platform yes that that is literally I, I suppose the server is nothing else but a viewing stage. Yeah, I so you know, can look but... down onto the kingdom below and whatnot. Yeah, actually quite still... common. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but still it's one of those scenarios or situations where, hmm, I don't remember seeing this in the cartoon. <laughs> it's probably for the movie, but still. still. Oh yeah, I imagine that, it was going, that um, the movie is going to make Cancel look look significantly different to how it does in the show. True that, true that. And if you're interested in the book, by the way, um, it's a hardcover, right around the price of $35.99 American. So that's cool. And talking about the movie, um, it seems that we are getting, well, we get a sneak peek at the international movie poster. And it looks good. It looks good. It looks really good. It's the best one that I've released so far. Yep, it's much better than... The American cover that was out. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't take too much to look better than that, though. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. Still, uh, I have to point out that this is still dark. It's using dark colors. It's not as bad as the other one. This has a lot, a lot better contrast between light and dark colors. Mm, and this true. uses the, the 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 glittery, um, movie logo. As opposed to what was it? Because there was another poster, the the for a specific country that we had in the episode like a month ago. I think China was it because I think it was. Chinese. I think it might have been like the Chinese one or something like yeah. that, which used the the no, more normal looking logo. Yeah, and it was a nice looking poster, but this just has so much more details on it and looks so much nicer. It definitely grabs your eye. Yeah, I, I don't mind buying this poster. It looks good. But at the same time too, like, eh, maybe it's the art critic in me. But still, I do like how they highlight certain words in yellow, like the artists, uh, Emily Blunt, uh, Sia, Ty Diggs, and so on, and coming soon. All those little things, they really, uh, kind of popped out to you, saying that, oh, this is coming soon. And one thing, no Terra Strong, no Tabitha St. Germain. Oh, wait, they are. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's there, that's there. No, yeah. They, they'll be written at the, the credits at the bottom of the poster where it just lists like all the main voice actors and whatnot. Yep, yep. Which is fa- fairly normal. Like the, the other ones, because they're, they're big name stars and whatnot, and they're only here for the movies. As far as we know so far, 
is why they're like separated and uh, in the big yellow lettering at the top. Because I, I know a lot of people have complained, like, why do those people get their names like in the big yellow letters and not like the the voice actors of the main cast? And it's like, well, the the, the main cast have been doing those voices voices for those characters for like seven years now. True. If you're unaware of them, you've been living under a, a brick. <laughs> No, but still, it's the credits. Like, you want your favorite artist to get credited, you know? I mean, they are getting credited in the in the credits. It's just on uh, the you always get the the big name ones that are like here. See see this movie because these people are in it. Will always be separated and have their names in bigger fonts and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess it's one of those attractions like having Beyonce in that one movie. You remember that one movie where she was a fairy princess or something like that something like that yeah yeah i i guess but still we all know who the real stars are yeah spike (laughs) yeah spike is the real star katie westlock yeah (laughs) no but to be serious the real star here is sunset shimmer i wish (laughs) well if you want sunset shimmer to be the real star uh, her DVD is out. Remember Dance Magic, Movie Magic, and Mirror Magic? That whole set of magic series? I remember them. I absolutely love them. I, I want my hands on, on, on what this is for right now. Well, it's available on Amazon. It's the DVD for the, uh, magic set. Um, it says here it's, uh, Magical Movie Night. My Little Pony Equestria Girls. That's how they titled it, but in reality, it's just that three special that's been aired on uh, Discovery Family and also at that uh, Polish cartoon thing there. So it's there and it's available for DVD and I would like to buy this if available. Let's see how much is it. Did did they get aired yet in America? I have no idea because I, I, I just... I was like, I'm screw it. I'm watching the Polish <laughs> English airings because I was like, I, I I can't wait. I don't need to wait. I live in I live in Australia waiting <laughs> scrubs. Uh yeah, it's uh it came out three weeks ago. Um one one week of the thing in order. So last week was uh, Mirror Magic. Alright, now the see you waiting for all of the, the the videos from the analysis and the reactors and whatnot to come out. Yeah, true. If it comes out. But still, uh, if you're interested in buying the DVD, it's going to be at $9.96 American and the Blu-ray is going to be $13.99. So $14 for Blu-ray. If you want the multi-format, I think that's Blu-ray and DVD. That's also $14. Hmm. Might as well get that one. So for me, it's probably going to cost like 30 bucks plus for any of them. Same here, my friend. If it were me, if it were my country, probably I have to pay about 60. Ugh. Yikes. Yep. Malaysian economy is not that strong. But still, I would like to buy it because I like the Quest Girl series. Quest Girls is so much better than the show right now. Uh, I, I, the movie I, I, has something to, that it has to try and prove me wrong about. Well, I, I wouldn't say anything to that, but still... Uh, ponies in general are awesome and also William Shatner thinks so and apparently he has discovered the uh, how do I put this uh, he discovered 4chan slash MLP yep uh, you want to take this one toy yes I can I, I am the 4chan um, delver here oh god let's see because I, I haven't read this article yet I know it's popped up, but I haven't had a chance to properly read it. Let's see. He's put up a tweet that I'm going to be over on at 4chan slash MLP if you need me. (laughs) Oh, God. Why would you? No. No, William. No. Don't go there. (laughs) And then I I assume this is most likely like an AMA or something he was doing. Mm-hmm. There's a follow-up tweet uh, where he's put a screen cap of, of a message that was posted on the board, and it says, mm-hmm. actually found one without profanity or zoophilia messages. Uh, that message says anonymous, 
But is he the 86-year-old William Shatner that did Star Trek? <laughs> because there are other William Shatners, apparently. Probably. <laughs> <coughs> well, now, um, <laughs> uh, oof, w- welcome to 4chan, William. Um, I-, I hope you enjoy your stay. Um, Leave your uh, sanity at the door. <laughs> yeah. The thing about 4chan is... Y- yeah, anything goes. So, yeah. <laughs> but there are rules. It's just the, the people they go there I'd like to embrace the 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 old uh, saying of rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> yeah, but but still, but still, oh, he, he has dared to go where no man has gone before. <laughs> I, I don't think there has been. Has there been a, 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 someone who was on MLP at all that's actually been to slash MLP? I don't know. Cause I don't think, I don't, I can't think of any of the VAs that have been on the show going to slash MLP. I think a couple of them were on Reddit, but. To be honest, Lauren Faust went to slash MLP on 4chan. No wonder she left. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't think Slash MLP existed back then. I think it was on the cartoon boards. Was it B? Um, I don't remember what the cartoon boards is, but it cartoon is not B. B is random, and B is where you go if you want to find anything. That mm. that is the danger zone. Uh, okay, but still, uh, I I did remember Lauren went there just to check out how things are, and I think that's how she discovered the fandom because of a group of Russian guys singing Winter Wrap Up. That's how I remember it. Yeah, finally, the rest of the world discovered the fandom in such an innocent way. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you know what? The rest of the fandom and how they discovered the pony fandom was interesting. William Shatner here discovered the pony fandom through slash MLP, so yay. But to say that it's not fair, I, I think he discovered it through cons that he went. Hmm? Yeah, I'd say he probably knew about... At this point, if you, if you don't know that the, the brony fandom exists, then you've definitely been living under a brick. Yeah, because, you know, we had a lot of news coverage in the start, and we still oh, yeah. get some coverage here and there. Oh yeah, most of them now are positive rather than the negative one that we had before. Yeah, yeah. So we, we the, all the all the people who were hating, they they've got they got bored and went to find the new target, the punch. Oh yeah, and clearly there's a big one right there out now. You 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 know the one I'm talking about. Not really. I, I've I live under a brick half the time myself. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm not even gonna state it out because it's it's a big target. So anywho, talking about targets, why not point that target with a Pinkie Pie Party Cannon keychain? Yay! LED keychains for ponies. Yeah, of ponies. Yeah. So if you guys remember Interplay, they're the guys that did the whole My Little Pony trading cards that you can trade with people because it's fun to get those kind of cards. Remember those? Yes. It was short-lived, but still, it was kind of popular. Like, it's still going. I would like to get a bunch of them, but the problem is, it's like, it's not even worth it for me to get a box on my own because it's trading cards. The fun of it is to collect a place. Well, it's to collect everything and trade with people, you know? That's the fun. Oh, yeah. It's... It's kind of sad that uh, by the time I was buying the cards here, the craze for them had come and gone, so I didn't have anyone to play with, and I don't like collecting cards if I can't play the game. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. And, yeah, I'm I'm double-checking on Enterplay and what they do, and, yeah, they mostly, from my experience and from what I've bought from Enterplay, it's the trading... Uh, collectible card games ccg oh yeah they do the ccg too yeah now i remember yeah it's the ccg the trading cards they also do um some dog tags which is cool and they also have play mats for your trading card games well since they do the ccg obviously they have a play mat you know what most of these are 
trading cards. Yeah, yeah, they're the cut people. They're the cut people. I'm I'm just having a look at something like the G.I. Joe ones once this page loads. <laughs> it's a personal peeve of mine, the use of the terms trading card game and collectible card game, because <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, if they're cards that you can collect, but you battle with them in a game and you can mm-hmm. trade between them to get all of them, that should be a trading card game because that's uh-huh. how a lot of the early ones, MTG, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, that's how they were all marketed. They were trading card games. Yeah, and if it's true. a collectible card game, the name sort of emphasizes more collecting them rather than using them for anything, which is like everything that they've called a trading card game is more a collectible card game, like baseball cards, in my opinion. And it really, it, it irks me. So let's get back to these keychains. Yeah, all right, all right. So these keychains are not out yet, but expect them in September. So these keychains are cool. They're, uh, I think, made out of rubber, is it? They look like they're made out of rubber, which would probably most likely be the case. If, they're L- if they have LEDs in them, yeah, the rubber would be like extra insulation. Mm, that makes sense. That makes sense. And it seems that we'll be having uh, back and front of them, like they're printed on both sides. So that's good. Yeah, I, I can see them being double-sided. And we only get, so far, they've only shown an image of three different ones. I think we're going to get more of them. Like, the one that we are seeing now is probably uh, just samples of what they will have. Because just having Party Cannon Pinky, uh, Wonderbolt Rainbow, and also Starlight Glimmer dressed in that one Christmas special is... Snowfall not, Frost. Yeah, Snowfall Frost. It's not going to be a huge attraction. Like, come on. It looks like they've also got several sizes that they come in. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'm not 100% sure if that's true. Because one of those rainbows looks significantly larger than the rest of them. Yeah, and that one pinky pie with the other pinky, that looks huge. Yeah. So I doubt... The question is why the LEDs are in these things. Like, looking at this, the, 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 the solo shot of a pinky pie, I can't see where the LED lights are. Mm, for the pinky, it's in front of the party cannon because it's stated out with a huge... Ah, I see, yeah. Yeah. But not sure about the rest, though. I guess the LED light's just on one side of each of them. Probably. That's kind of dull. I was hoping that they had LEDs spread throughout them that light up. That would have been cool. Oh, remember back in the days when your keychains or your dangly phone thingies will brighten up because you get a phone call or something like that? Remember those? I knew of them, but I never had one. Oh, it was kind of popular here in Malaysia. They, they marketed it as some kind of, oh, protect yourself from the radiations. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, phone charms are something that I never got into. I watch too much anime to not know about them. <laughs> I want uh, one, but I know they're impractical for phones uh, in their current state. I know. I, I want one too, but just for the fact that, okay, if I were to put it here, I might lose it. So, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> Uh, but still, but still. <clears throat> so that's the news for this week. So let's pop into what we have been doing with our week. So Twy, you mentioned laser tag. Wanna share the story? It, it's something that's uh, a friend of mine who lives way, way out of town has been organizing with me every year. They, they will come in mid June or July. And then we'll, we'll set an evening aside where we'll try and get as many people together as possible and play laser tag. So last night was this year's day for laser tag. And I didn't actually make it to the last year's one because I showed up late with my mates and then we all decided, bugger it, we're going to go to see a movie. <laughs> what movie was it, if you remember? Oh, heck if I know. <laughs> it was either last year that we went and saw a movie or last year was I was too broke to go. I just remember there was one time where we went and saw a movie instead. But oh, right. yeah, last night we, we showed up, played pretty good time. As I said earlier, I haven't played in like a year or two, so I'm rusty. So I only came third and second. 
for a couple of the rounds came more a couple of the other rounds I came more to like seventh or eighth. Oh wow. Still, uh that's fun. Like I've heard a lot of fun things about the laser tags. Oh yeah. It's it, it's fun, although I feel like I'm too tall for it because the 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 chest packs sit too high up on my chest in my opinion. All right. And I can't duck behind things without like really having to get down onto my knees and such. <laughs> because I'm just too tall for everything. Oh no. And, and I have to be careful when I go down ramps because I build up speed a lot quicker than a 12 year old half my height. So if anyone turns around the corner at the bottom and I'm coming down, like they better hope that I was trying, doing my best to, to not be quick because otherwise I'm just going to barrel them over. Yeah, and they shoot their formal points. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, as long, as long as they don't get a concussion from being knocked over <laughs> by a giant, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, well, that's why you're the BFG. Ah, uh, well, I want to know about the friendly part. Um. <laughs> oh, wow. That is very inside baseball. <laughs> uh, it was it was a lot of fun to play laser tag after the previous night where at, trying to edit the audio for that interview mm. video for my channel featuring yourself uh, jerked me around for three hours. And I just had to give up. It was it was a very relaxing to play laser tag. <laughs> yeah, like kill, kill, kill. Ah! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Def- everyone died. <laughs> Best story, twenty seventeen. <laughs> uh, but still, I I do hope that editing the interview is going to go smoothly for you, man. Like I've been there before. I understand how frustrating it can get. Just need to be redoing the work. Uh, it, it's stressful, but I'm sure that you'll manage. And I also, I seen a lot of people comment on your posts about that complaint, and they've mentioned a lot of other programs like Ableton and so on. Yeah, yeah. If I run into a lot of problems with Audacity in the future, I'll probably look at changing. But for the most part, uh, Audacity works fine for me, so I I don't think I'll change. Well, it's one of those cases where um, it's a case-by-case basis because I think you mentioned that interview was the longest one we had, or you had. So, well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. On on the flip side of things, I also sat down at like one in the morning after laser tag and watched... The original 1988 Pound Puppies movie again on YouTube. Uh, I'm trying to remember because I think I've seen it before. Uh... The Pound Puppies and the Legend of Big Paul. Oh, I, I think I've seen it before. I, I'm half expecting uh, that if if I, if Silver Quill and and Sappy were here, Silver Quill would probably remember it, and Sappy would be left completely clueless. As whenever oh. Silver Quill brings up anything that oh, yeah. was, you know, older than 2002. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember this one. I remember this one. Oh, gosh. Oh, and okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the big Paul guy uh, in the end becomes some, like, oh, wow. This, this is huge spoilers. He becomes, I was... he be, oh, spoilers for a movie that's over 30 years old. I don't think anyone's going to care, Norman. <laughs> But yeah, Big Paul t- uh, becomes a-, a guard at the museum, the guarding yeah. the Bone of Scone. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Palm Poppy is another Hasbro product. Oh, God. Um, unfortunately, on YouTube, the video I was watching on YouTube, it cuts off, I think, the last maybe three or four minutes of the movie. Just It just oh. cuts short, and it's played at like 1.5 1. 1. speed or something like that. Oh yeah, just or one because, and a half times yeah. speed because it was definitely sped up. But still, wow! I can't, I can't believe you watched that, man. Like, oh, oh, this, I watched. I used to watch it as a kid. So when I, I when I was little, I was brought raised on ni- the nineteen eighties stuff. So you know, it's ni- yeah, yeah. 1995, 1996, I'm five, six years old. I'm still mostly watching movies and TV shows and listening to music from the nineteen eighties. Short circuit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you had awesome childhood. 
Oh, yeah, it was great. Wow, like retro podcast. Oh, well, no, never, never mind. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that one later if we do. Oh, yeah, and get a review of the old 19, 1980s <laughs> Pound Puppy movie. Oh, that, no. That I definitely want to be on if you do that. Oh, God, I'm not 100% sure if I want to do it. It's so tied to my memories as good times, so I don't know. But anyway, um, for me, what I've been doing, this week has been uh, pretty slow for me besides the whole gaming and whatnot. But uh, let's see. Uh, I think for an adventure for me, me and a friend went to the uh, PC store or the hard, uh, PC hardware store and he wanted to install a radiator in his PC and got to see his build and whew, his build is mean and the total for his build was about $12,000 oh sorry 12,000 ringgit uh, divided that by 4 you get the results um, 300 Three hundred, really? Oh, no, I think three thousand dollars American, probably. I think so. Wait, is it? Ha- how much was it in 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 ringgit? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Okay, so I thought twelve hundred for a moment. Yeah, so that's that's three thousand. Yeah. So yeah, three thousand American dollars. Woo! It's a pretty expensive build, but oh boy, was it awesome! And the sad part is, he's just gonna play World of Warship on it. Oh yeah, just. But then again, I, I I've heard stories of people they get like these several several grand worth of of a of a gaming rig of a PC, and mm-hmm. it's like, what are you gonna play? Minecraft. <laughs> like that Minecraft better be modded to the moon and back because, <laughs> ooh, it, it's 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 almost as bad as when people say, yeah, no, I'm gonna get a gaming laptop, and I'm just like, you need to stop. <laughs> Well, the gaming laptop does have some benefits, but in all honesty, gaming laptop doesn't really... Laptops are bad. <laughs> they, they, have a, they have a short lifespan. They have a multitude of problems that happen with them. Just They're good for, for like office and, and school needs. They're terrible for gaming. Especially considering like you have to buy a separate mouse to plug into it. Which that means you have to take the mouse with you if you take the laptop anywhere. True. Well, let's say gaming. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you're thinking of gaming, the time where you would do that is probably at a LAN party or something like that. It's convenient, yes. But in terms of lugging around a mouse, most gaming laptop will give you a free mouse. Like, I'm guilty here. I have a... ROG gaming laptop and they give me a, not Logitech but what was it? Acer mouse something like that like it's one of their gaming mouse which is pretty cool and they also give me headsets and whatnot so it was worth it at the time but the laptop power itself has been dwarfed immensely with time yeah I find most people with laptops uh, either the battery cable the battery or the port the cable plugs into, one of those three things is going to go to heck within two to three years. True, and that depends on how often they use it. Uh, In my case, luckily for me, I don't use it that often. Uh, One of the few reasons is because, well, uh, I remember buying the laptop because it's a replacement for my back then current laptop which was the macbook pro that blew up and had to get something to replace it but the funny story is as an emergency i had to buy a microphone for this pc here that i'm using now to record so i buy the whole setup it's a presonus uh, all-in-one preamp and microphone built and i've been using that ever since but i still bought a laptop but the funny part for that one is, I think the total amount of time spent on the laptop is under 24 hours, or could be under 48 hours or something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> How? If I had a laptop, that thing would be on, like, most of the time. Well, you have to remember, Twilight, my PC here is very convenient. Like, 
if I were to have a workstation, I would turn on my laptop, my PC, and my laptop will be there updating stuff and probably streaming YouTube. And my PC that I have right now would be probably playing games and stuff. But since I'm running a dual monitor setup, it's kind of null and void. <laughs> True. I'm jealous. I want to do a monitor setup, but I've hardly got the space for a second monitor, let alone the money for one. Oh, yeah. I understand that one. And to be honest, I want a third monitor. But but that that's starting to walk into redundancy territory. <laughs> Why, Norman? Why? I, I don't know. The, the more I think about it, like, I'm just insane. Like, why do I need three monitors? Okay, um, I remember, uh, tech blogger by the name of Chris Brillo. He mentioned that once you go dual monitors or more, your productivity level will increase immensely. And you know what? It's true. And he also mentioned that once you go dual screen, you can never turn back. Also true. So whenever I'm doing something on the laptop, there's something in the back of my mind wishing that I wish I could just connect uh, another monitor so I can just have another monitor to the side while I have something in the middle. <laughs> I, I can understand that. Uh, but still, it's one of those things where I need to control myself. Yes. Yes, you do, Norman. Yeah, you're getting out of hand and, and we may have to have an intervention. <laughs> Uh, well, talking about adventures and stuff, okay, um, this is something for more to do with work. <clears throat> I recently bought this digital voice recorder, and just to put an image in your guy's head, it's basically a tape recorder, but instead of using tape, it uses uh, memory cards. You know what a tape recorder is, right? Yeah. So, basically, I recently bought one, just for the sole fact of going to Project C PonyCon. And yeah, just because I wanted something to do interviews with, so I bought one. Uh, someone, I need control, please. Uh. Oh, but, but still, but still, it's one of those things where, okay, this is for work, this is for the show. Uh, let, let's hope that this works well because, hey, a caramba, I'm spending a lot. Oh no. Uh, I wish I had the money to spend. But at least you bought something that we can use while we're at Sea PonyCon. Oh yeah, that, that's the thing too, because most most of the things that I'll, I'm buying here is to be used at the convention, because I'm going to do stuff for this show, for the audience at home who are listening to this now. So I remember the recent live show I did at the Friendship Express, the video quality, the audio quality didn't turn out the way I wanted it to be. So as a redundancy... I bought a Rode microphone for my DSLR, and at the same time too, I bought the digital voice recorder as a redundancy. So, I <laughs> I need help. Uh, well, things are gonna happen. True, true. At least if we're stuck in a room together, we could do a show, and I could just pop this one out and talk about silly stuff. Uh, I can talk about silly stuff for days. Yay. Oh, well. But anywho, anywho. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. If you'd like to reach us on the Twitters, the show's Twitter account is at mbsshow, and mine is at Norman Sanzo. Twy, where can the good people find you? They can find me on Film Fiction and DeviantArt as... Twilight Genesis. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter as Double Pint Productions. Also on Twitter as at Midnight underscore Pint. And I think that's it. <laughs> I'm starting to space out. <laughs> uh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. Uh, please do like it because we could use more thumbs up. Yay. And also you can catch us on PonyVLive.com. Everything will be listed in the show notes. And also please do subscribe to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. Available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you'll get me, 
Silver Quill and Sapphire Heart Song, reviewing the My Little Pony episodes, comics, and movies. Um, like mostly we've been reviewing the what's we call the Sequestra Girls movie, but soon we'll do the real movie. So that will be up there too. And we also do some other random things. Like last week, we did a discussion on Dragon Ball Super. It was a fun review. You guys should totally go watch it. It's fun. If you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you'll get full access to the deleted content and also early access to the review and discussion podcasts. And also a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker, Cat, Twilight Genesis, Tim Dracotorius, Starstream, Master of Lag, and also Jeffrey. Thank you guys for the support. You guys are really awesome. You're welcome, Norman. No problem. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Cheers. Cheers.